Hey, are you ready to change your life? If the answer is yes, there's only one rule. You have to change your mind first. And my friend, there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith and everything starts to make sense. That place is called self-brain surgery. You can learn it and it will help you become healthier, feel better, and be happier. And the good news is you can start today. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, so glad to have you listening today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa, my father-in-law, Tata, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery. To get it done, you can get the show notes and more at drleewarren.podbean.com. That's drleewarren.podbean.com, and if you'd like the show please subscribe so you never miss an episode and tell your friends about it. If you tell two or three friends this podcast was helpful to you, imagine how much good we can all do around the world together. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. Hey, friend, it's Sunday afternoon, and I'm sitting here looking at the river with Tata. Hey, Tata. Hi, how are you? I'm really well. It's. Uh, I think we're finally over that virus. I think so. Uh, and we're in almost week four. It was pretty uh, profound, wasn't it? It was. I have never experienced anything like that in my life. But, it was, but by God's grace, we've been healed. Amen. And spared the wrath of the disease. Amen. Well, this is the last, uh, this will be the last Tuesday in July. And so we're going to talk for a few minutes today just as a, a preparation for all in August. Amen. And so I, I, I wanted to bounce a couple of scriptures off of you in a story and just kind of get your take on what it means to go all in for God. You know, I think um, we always seem to have some part of our lives that we kind of shield from Him or protect from Him or don't quite uh, give Him control of. Yes, I think that's true. I, I think there's, we shelter, we shelter part of our, ourselves we do that from other people and people we know and people we love. Yeah. And we we know and we hide and sometimes we even hide from ourselves. That's right. And sometimes we just hold back like our our finances we're scared to to tithe or to, we're scared to give him to keep trust his promise that he'll yes. give back more than we give him. And That's right. Sometimes we just hold back. So, I have a couple of stories today I want to share with you and just just have a little talk about what it would look like if we really could go all in. Um, this book by Mark Batterson um, that we're going to be working through over the course of the month starts with a story called Pack Your Coffin. Uh, <laughs> and he tells the story of a hundred years ago there were a group of missionaries that went out to the mission field and they didn't take suitcases. They packed their belongings in their coffins because uh, they didn't intend to come home. So they, they, they packed their belongings in their coffins. Which is remarkable. That's that's commitment. Absolutely, uh, I've heard I've heard about burning the boats on the beach. Yeah, Cortez did that when he came to the New World. Yes. So um, this uh, missionary named A. W. Milne went to the South Pacific with his belongings in a coffin, and the place where he went, um, no previous missionary had ever survived. They'd all mm. been murdered, mm. and he was there thirty-five years before he died, and. When he died, the tribe members buried him in their village and inscribed on his tombstone this. When he came, there was no light. When he left, there was no darkness. Ah, amen. <laughs> he, he, he was the light. He brought the light. That's right. He brought sure. the light of Jesus that's to them. That's right, yes. And that's how a lot of people feel about you, Tata. Ah. <laughs> when he came, there was no light. Hey, um, I, got a, I got a scripture for you. So there's a story in Second. i I'm sorry. First Kings 19. First Kings 19. Yes. The prophet Elisha, yes. who was the successor to Elijah. Um, and there's a story, and it just illustrates the idea of going all in. So we're going to start in verse 19. First Kings 19, 19. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. 
He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and become his servant. Amen. What does that say about his commitment? Oh, well, it, that's powerful. Um, you, you have to you have to you have to think about what what kind of situation Elijah Elisha was in. Elijah, Elijah was in at that time. He Elijah was running. Mm-hmm. He was he was fearful of uh, uh, being killed himself. They have been Jezebel. Yeah, yeah. And he it, the, part of that story was when God appeared to him in the cave. He had he had gone and. In fact, is he even he even went and and slept under a broom tree? I, I can't. I have no picture of broom tree. I don't know what that mm-hmm. is. But nope. then he was in a cave, and but, but the Lord the Lord said, the Lord asked him twice, Elisha, what are you doing here? Yeah, what are you doing here? Uh, and that should have been enough right there. But we have to we have to think about what kind of position that Elisha Elijah had with God because in uh, Moses. It, well, it's recorded in Deuteronomy that there had been no prophet like Moses mm-hmm. when Elijah came. That's right. There had not been, because he would stand in the midst of the people, and he challenged, I mean, we know part of that story, he challenged mm-hmm. the, uh, the, the prophets of Baal, uh, but, but God appeared to him. And God, he, he, God told him, go stand here, I'm a, and, and I'll, I'll show you. Mm-hmm. And, and God, there was a windstorm. Yep. So severe that it broke the rocks. Yep. But God was not in the windstorm. Mm-mm. Then there was an earthquake, and it was violent. But God was not in the earthquake. Yep. And then there was a wind. And then there was a whisper. Yep. A still small voice. A still small voice. And that's where God was. And He asked him again, "What are you doing here?" Mm-hmm. And so then, the, and it picks up in 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 in, in First Kings nineteen again, where Elijah goes to see Elisha. Yeah. Now, do you think that was just happenstance? No. No, absolutely not. I think I think he was called to go do that, and I think and but when we see, because immediately Elisha knew who he was, um, and and think about. What kind of job did Elijah have? Elisha. He was a farmer. He was a farmer. He was plowing. He plowing the fields. And but he, but the prophet of the Lord came to him, and he he knew immediately what he had to do because he stopped. That's right. And and all he wanted to do is go back and tell his mom and dad goodbye. That's right. He wanted to tell them goodbye. Yeah. But then he look was what he be did. Gone. He sacrificed the team of the oxen. He he burned he on on the, he, he broke up the plow and apparently built the fire to burn to sacrifice the the uh, the oxen and then he gave it to the people yeah and then he went and followed Elijah and so what this what this says to me is he was he was fully committed to following Elijah and following God and becoming the prophet he even later asked for a double portion of Elijah's blessing yes. and got it and Elijah performed more miracles than Elijah did. Because he asked God for something God wanted to do, um, but he 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 doesn't just walk away and he doesn't go sell the oxen and save the money in no, case his job no, doesn't work out. No, he does He not. burns up his livelihood. That's right. And and feeds it to people and they eat it and it's gone. Like he he can't go back now. No, he's, he's got to go forward. It's like Cortez burning the boats when he got that's, to that's South right. America. That's right. Because on the ships. because he had no place left to go. That's right. There's no he, retreating. Because he ended it right there. That's right. Now, does God require that kind of commitment from us? We decide. That's right. We decide. Did That's you hear right. that? We. We decide. We have to think about that. That's God right. is talking and God is calling, and we have to decide. That's right. This would be like, well, shout out to Jerry Deaver and his family that, that farm the field over here yeah. next to our house. We see these guys. I know Jerry listens to the podcast, so Jerry, we're shouting you out. But let's say that God came and told Jerry that he's calling him into the mission field. It'd be like Jerry setting his combine on fire yeah. and following God. That's right. Yeah. Jerry, I'm not recommending you do that. No. But I'm just saying that that's what Elisha did here. He was so convinced that God was calling him to a new way of life that he, he made it impossible to go back to the that's ease right. and comfort right. of his that's former right. life. He decided. He decided to go all in. That's right. He, he All in. And, and we talked about this before and. And I just want to share with you the experience that I had with this. I was in a, 
uh, Bible study fellowship, uh, and I think we talked about this once before, but and there was a young man in there, his, his name is Charlie, and uh, Charlie had stage four pancreatic cancer, mm. and uh, we prayed for him, and but he had and he had a prayer group that was praying for him uh, in, in in Dallas, but he said that he was all in, and and I showed him this bookmark, the one you gave me last week, yeah, <laughs> all Romans in. That's right. So it's amazing. It, but here again, he decided that he was all in, and what 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 became of him? He became a two percenter. Only two percent because stage four pancreatic cancer is fatal. That's right. And so only two, one or two percent of people survive it. Yeah. And he survived it. And wow. He, he recovered. But he was all in, and and that that's where that's where he was, and this is where Elisha was. Yep. He was all in. That's right. So he decided. Now, <laughs> l- let me tell you why I wanted to talk about this today. So there's so many of us, and you can get on the prayer wall, go to wlewarnmd.com slash prayer, and you'll see, and you can go to the hosp- any hospital, you can go to any county jail, and you'll see people whose lives are messed up. They're struggling, they're dying, they're incarcerated, they're, they're, it's impossible, whatever situation they're in. It's impossible, and yeah. you can get on the prayer wall, and there's just there's just misery, there's pain, and there's fear, mm-hmm. and, and the economy, and you know, everybody's worried about everything, right? And and the idea is that our lives are so full of things that we can't see the way out or the way forward. And God says, you think that you're carrying all that you can possibly carry, but if you'll come all the way in with me, I'll take your burdens. And I'll show you that it's not impossible. That's right. That's right. And, and, and God will walk with us. That's right. So here's a verse for you, Tata. I'm going to get your cold take on this. I didn't warn you about this one. <laughs> Second Chronicles 16.9. This, my friend, is why we need to go all in. Because when he feels like you can't carry your life anymore, let me tell you what God says he'll do if you go all in. NIV version of Second Chronicles 16.9. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the whole earth oh. to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Oh. No, that's true. And, and that, is a, that is a profound thought. And I've thought about that many times, that the Lord's eyes is on us. Yep. He's looking for us. He's searching for us. The fact is, in Jesus' encounter with the woman at the well, uh, the, the woman had a question. She wanted to know where. And Jesus told her who. That's right. That because the people that worship God have to worship Him in spirit and truth. And so what does that speak to? That speaks to our heart. That's right. It speaks to our commitment. That's right. It speaks to our... And Now, what are we? Are we perfect? No. Do we have clay feet? Yes. Absolutely. And are we sinners? Yes. Right. Are we saved by grace? Yes. Yep. Are we... Are our sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ? Yes. Absolutely. But still, people forget, we forget one thing, that God is looking for those that are looking for Him. That's right. He's looking to strengthen them. That's right. So He says, I know you're tired. I know you're weary. I just need you to commit to me, and I'm going to help you. That's right. And that's what we're trying to get out here as we get ready to go into August. Like We're just going to spend 31 days looking and talking about different ways that God wants our whole heart. That's right. And what we can expect to have happen if we give it to Him. That's right. Well, we, we will receive the blessings that, that God has for us. That's right. That have our name on them. That's right. Because He knows us. He searches our heart. That's right. And He knows where we are. And the only thing that, that sometimes that, that is troublesome to, to us as people, as God's children is we have the inability, and we, or maybe we don't have the desire to forgive ourselves. That's because right. Jesus said, very simply, cast your burdens on me. That's right. And I will, I will give you rest. Yep. All My you, yoke is easy. Amen. Yeah. All, those, all that, are, that, are, that, are, that are tired and weary, come unto me. And, and that's what we have to do. That's easy to do, no. Hard to do sometimes because well, the devil is always lurking, always. That's right. And he will plant seeds in your mind. When he sees that you have a desire to know God, just as we heard today, then he will plant in your heart, your heart that you don't have the ability to do it. That's correct. 
So what he was, what we're, what we're doing sometimes is we're selling ourselves so short that we cannot see. That's right. Uh, and and I and I don't know uh, the uh, circumstances then and places that God puts us. Sometimes, maybe it's an awakening, maybe it maybe and maybe it's not. But we have to always be mindful of the fact that God's word is true. That's right. And there's an important point to be made here. I want to be very careful to to state this crystal clear, friend. If you're listening, we are not saying that if you go all in with God, your life will become easy, problem-free, wealthy. We're not. This is not a prosperity gospel. No. What we're saying is exactly what this verse says. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the whole earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to you, to Him. He doesn't say to solve all the problems of those, Absolutely to not. enrich those, to make them cancer-free, to, to save their marriage. He's not saying he'll always solve your problem. That's right. He's saying he will give you strength to endure the problem and walk with you through the problem. The, the key there is what Jesus said. Jesus said, uh, fear not, for I have overcome the world. But That's in right. this world, you, you will, will have always trouble. have trouble. That's right. You will always have trouble. That's right. So what we're saying is you can have life one of two ways. You can have it on your own, with all the problems and issues that come along with it. Or you can have it with Him who promises mm-hmm. to bear your burden and walk alongside you and give you strength and endurance and peace and abundance and the ability to find joy and hope and purpose in the midst of all that trouble. No, that's exactly right. And, and as you look at the, the case of Elisha, um, we're, 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 I'm, I'm not going to go burn my plow. No. <laughs> I'm not going to go uh, kill my oxen. That's right. Um, but... I, I, I am looking for God, and I'm, I'm searching for God, and one of the things that I recognize, and I don't want to ever lose sight of, is that I am a sinner. Amen. Saved by grace. Amen. Now, does that make it easy? No. No. Does it make it harder? Maybe. Yeah, sometimes. But, it, but, it, <clears throat> but the, the peace, uh, friends, you can't I help you, I have to help, try to help you understand the peace you cannot understand. I can't even explain it. Um, and, you know, we say that word a lot, and we know the definition of peace, a calming spirit. Uh, but, but God promises us peace. Yep. And he promises us hope. And he promises us to take, promise to take us home. Yep. And that's where, we, that's where we struggle sometimes. We have to understand this world is not our home. That's right. I love the I love the uh, the, the the way the, the message translates that verse in in First Corinthians about Paul said we're aliens and strangers mm-hmm. in this world. Yeah. The message says this world is not your home. That's right. Don't get cozy in it. <laughs> That's right. Don't get cozy in it. That's and right. So sometimes, and, and one of the things that, that has helped me understand that when I look at death, the person that dies. All they're doing is changing addresses. That's right. This world, what we're, this, where we are is temporary. That's right. Um, and, and I know and people have said before, that, and the prophet said that three score and ten, that's 70 years, that's what God gave us to live mm-hmm. on this earth. And, and someone has added, if by reason of good health you live to be 80, and your days will be full of woe. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So, and, and that's correct. Because there, the, the Lord presents you with uh, how the, 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 your, 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 how humble you are and, yeah. and, and, and present you with the fact that you are only a shell. That's right. Exactly right. Yeah, I wanted to just, just spend this couple of minutes today just to set the table for where we're going next. And, and next week, you'll have something for us to talk about. But I, I wanted to give you, friend, just an opportunity to start thinking. You had a week left in July, and just to think about what it would look like if you took some area of your life or, or your whole life and you said, you know what, I'm, I'm burning this plow. Yeah. I'm not leaving this opportunity to go okay. back the way it used to be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all in with God and see what He'll do. Give Him a chance to keep His promises. That's right. Give Him a chance to do what He says He intends to That's do right. with you or wants to do with That's you. That's right. And just go all in. And, and I guess, Tata, the, the question I would ask you 
No, Jerry, don't burn your combine. But if, if Jerry or Lola or somebody else who's listening out there is going to go all in with God, when should they start? Yeah, they start today. That's right. Don't wait for August 1st. Start today. That's right. <laughs> and sometimes we have to, one of the things that I have learned, um, and, and, and maybe it, it's taken me a lifetime to learn it, is a, a posture of thankfulness. Yeah, absolutely. Being thankful for what we have. I thank the Lord every day. One, for reminding me of my humanity. But at the same time, I thank him for blessing me. That's right. Uh, and, and, and what I've learned to say is all this and Jesus, Jesus too. Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren podcast is listener supported. Check out patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. That's patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patrons and partners get free books, transcripts, special patron only episodes and more. And partners like you allow us to stay ad free and keep growing. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And if you like the show, you'll love my weekly letter. Check out my writing at drleewarren.substack.com drleewarren.substack. Dot com. Get the free newsletter every week for my best prescriptions for becoming healthier, feeling better, and being happier through the power of faith and neuroscience smashing together via self-brain surgery. Dr. Lee Warren, dot substack, dot com. And if you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at wleewarrenmd.com slash prayer. The theme music for the show is Make Us One by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by the great folks over at tommywalkerministries.org. Check it out and consider supporting them, tommywalkerministries.org. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day.
to the one from the 